So just so you know, this call is going to be recorded today um, as we, we talk about careers in ag sales. Um, if you um, are just here listening, it does not capture any of your information, so it won't capture your name or your picture. If you do turn your camera on and unmute to ask a question later on throughout, um, that's when we will, the, the recording may capture your picture, um, but it still won't save your name along with that. As you may remember, for those of you that were with us last time, we do have a couple security settings in place right now. Um, you are currently able to chat with myself or with um, some of our other adults that are serving as co-hosts today. Um, you can direct a question to them, but I do encourage you to just send any questions you might have that you want me to ask to the speakers. To me, um, it doesn't allow you to chat between um, other participants. Um, and you currently cannot unmute yourself. When I do invite you to open up for questions, I will turn that setting on as well so you can unmute. So I know we are, um, still might have a couple people trying to catch up with some of the technology issues that we had with us. And again, I apologize about those, um, but I do want to be respectful of our presenters time. Um, and of course we have this recording. So if someone misses the first part, they can join us. Our panelists today here to talk to us about their career in ag sales. We have Adam Fritz, Jason Gumbart and Laura Lant. So once again, I will just remind you to, um, you know, please remember that we're as we're on here throughout the chat function, throughout our questions, that we've got some people volunteering their time to tear a little bit about us. So let's kind of maintain that that culture of respect and all of those things that are so important to making this successful. Um, I will let you know when you're able to unmute to ask your questions, and I invite you to at that time. Um, until then, if you've got some that you don't want to forget, feel free to chat those to me. I will make a note and write those down so that we won't miss them. Bob. At that this time, I am going to go ahead um, and open it with our first question to our speakers and just ask them, how did you decide to pursue a career in agriculture sales? Well, I can start with that one. Um, I knew from the time that I was pretty little that I wanted to be an agronomist. My dad was one and I grew up following him around in the fields when he went to crop scout on summer breaks and everything like that. So that, that was a big part of it. I had families who farmed, but my parents didn't farm directly. Um, grandparents did. So just spending time on the farm and knowing I wanted to be involved in ag is what led me to to obtain an agronomy degree and led me to where I am today. So I had a little different path from that. You know, I, I actually didn't know that I was going to focus on agriculture when I was in college. I, I didn't, or when I was in high school, excuse me. I, uh, you know, my parents didn't farm. My grandparents had, but uh, that was long in the past. Um, but it was, you know, really my desire to spend my time outdoors. I knew you know, since I was little, I wanted to spend time outdoors. I loved it, loved being outside as a kid, you know, high school, anything I could do to be outside, that's what I wanted to do. And, and really for me to, to combine that, that ability to be outside and, and, and be in nature, and then with the family history of being in farming, um, you know, to combine those, that really made the decision pretty easily to uh, pursue the career that I did. So, and I'm happy that I did that. Adam, are you able to connect? Looks like we've got you muted right now if you're trying to talk. You're still muted, Adam. Adam is um, currently experiencing one of the benefits that he will tell you about his career in ag sales, and that is um, some of the the flexibility in the workplace. So he is doing his other career of farming right now. Um, Adam, you are still muted. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. It said the host wouldn't let me. So um, I was trying to, but anyways, uh, so 
I didn't hear the question. I got disconnected from the video for whatever. Um, I kind of quit my second job here real quick uh, and just decided to let my dad take over. But we're uh, we're hauling manure today. Um, but based off of what I heard from Jason and a little bit from Laura, I'm assuming Shelby asked um, what kind of drove us to get get here and do what we do. Um, so I grew up on a farm, a uh, small farm. We've got about 40 head of cattle and um, farm about 350 acres. That's, uh, that's not enough to support um, my family is, or like my mom and my dad, as well as me. And so uh, we had to find a farm income. And so basically uh, that's what I did. I originally wanted to be a veterinarian, um, but uh, that's, I don't know. I went to SIUE, got a degree in biology, decided I didn't want to be a vet. I uh, didn't really want to mess with dogs and cats. And so got a degree in, um, or went and became a nutritional consultant for a feed company. So I'm sure we'll dive into education later. So. Awesome. Great. Thank you all for telling us a little bit about um, how you decided to pursue that career in ag sales. Would you be willing to share a little bit with what it may be a typical day looks like for you? Um, and if no day is typical, expand upon that. Um, well, uh, obviously you can tell, I, uh, every day is different for me. Um, I get a lot of flexibility uh, with my job. I get to travel around um, in this truck I'm currently sitting in. Uh, and go visit customers, uh, as well as trying to drum up new business. But then, uh, honestly, if I spent every day in a truck, I feel like I'd be, be doing myself a disservice in a way. Um, you can only visit so many people too much before you're annoying, or at least that's my opinion. Uh, I would not want to be bugged like that all the time. But uh, so the rest of the time, I either work from home, uh, working on diets for current customers, uh, or uh, doing like what I'm doing now, helping my family farm, and we're getting ready to, you know, it won't be too long, we'll be in the fields, and uh, I get to enjoy the luxury of having that freedom and that flexibility to be able to do that. So the freedom and the flexibility is kind of one of the perks of my job, too. Um, I'm an agronomist for Midwest Grass and Forage, and my degree is in agronomy, but unfortunately, that's one of the things I probably get to spend the least amount of time doing anymore. Every day is a little bit different. Um, some days I'm in the office and I get to help guys design seating plans for their fields and help make those recommendations. Other days I may come into work with the plan of doing that, but somebody's sick or we're really busy and I end up in the warehouse. Um, my job throughout the year changes a lot. I do a lot of customer meetings where I'm speaking in front of groups of people about cover crops and products that they can use on their operation. There's times a year where I'm in the office working on putting together brochures and product guides. So it's, it's both one of my favorite and one of my least favorite things of the job is I never know what the next day is going to bring. Um, adaptability is a really important thing in ag in general because the weather can change your plans so much, but it can change my day to day too. This week, for instance, we were supposed to have rain tomorrow. It looks like that's getting pushed back to Thursday or Friday. So we've just kind of had to go with the flow and try to get as much done as we can in the next few days until it rains. So both a good thing and a bad thing, but there is no true every day. Just adapt to it and go with it as it happens. So I'm hearing a, a common theme there that I was going to say as well, you know, flexibility uh, in this business, in, in the agricultural industry is a, is a must. I mean, and, and adaptability. Uh, you know, so I, I deal in the seed business. I actually run, uh, run my own business, Apex Seeds. And that means I get to wear all the hats, uh, similar to what Laura has to do. But uh, one of the best things, you know, I love about working in the ag industry is that there's, there's no two days alike. Uh, while you always have, you know, you, you kind of have some foundation of what your day may look like. Uh, it's really the in-between that can really be both unpredictable and exciting. Uh, you know, but my business is fo farmer focused. And I think that would be, you know, my colleagues here would say the same, you know, we are focused on the farmer and, and with one of the most important times uh, of the season coming up in my business planning season, um, you know, it, it, it's so important uh, to never forget that farmer focus. And, and so during this time, you know, I'm doing a variety of things. You know, I, 
I've gone uh, from working on the computer to, uh, you know, doing stuff for the business. But when planting season comes around, it's all about delivering seed, uh, seed to planters and getting that seed in the ground. And, uh, you know, from that point, it's all about maintaining relationships, keeping that, uh, you know, that sales contact uh, uh, customer to, you know, me relationship going, uh, making sure my products are performing the way that uh, and growing the way that I want them to grow. Um, and uh, paying attention to any potential issues or successes, you know, that may be out there. And, and really beyond that, you know, every cropping year is different. Every week's different. Uh, you know, things, you can have the best plan in the book and it could fail in a hurry because it rained when it wasn't supposed to or snowed when it wasn't supposed to or so on and so forth. But I guess, you know, really the day-to-day -day activity in the seed industry and in my industry is all cemented right around the farmer. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, something that all you guys kind of touched on is forming those relationships um, with your customers. What do you think, um, what skills or, or what personality traits um, do you need to make you successful in your career in ag sales? Well, I think you know, I guess to, to expand on what I had just said, I mean, really, the you have to be personable and understanding. The thing is, no two farmers are alike. Everybody's got their own way of doing things of how they want to run their farm and how they want to do business. And if you've got it set in your head that you're going to, you know, this is just how you're going to deal with your customer base or people, if that's, you know, the route you decide to go. Um, it, it's, it's just not going to work. I mean, you have to be fl again, flexible. Uh, everybody's going to have a different personality coming in. So being personable, um, you know, really as far as other skills or such, I mean, it's, it really comes down to just being willing to understand, uh, the needs of the farmer, um, and those around you and be able to be, uh, you know, flexible when the day changes and not get, uh, flustered you know i know that was something that i did when i first got into the business was you know oh no my you know now what i do my days you know gone in a hurry well now we can you know adapt you know focus back on the customer and and that's really i think what uh what's the most important thing you know just being personable i i would echo that 100 percent and just treating people like you want to be treated that that's such a true one for all of us to remember but in ag relationships are key and i'm in a unique position with how many customers we have um we don't just cover one county we cover a lot of the state so i've got about 200 dealers who i know pretty well and maybe 50 to 100 people farmers and i've got another 1500 guys that I'll talk to a couple times throughout the year. So it's one of those, I can't always remember every conversation I have with one of with one guy to the next. So it's a matter of being consistent and making sure that if I don't know the answer, I tell them that I don't know instead of trying to BS my way through it, making sure that I'm honest so that when they call three or four months later, I tell them the same thing again. Either I don't know or I've learned the answer since then. So for me, that's a big one because unfortunately I don't get to know every operation as intimately as I would hope so. So just making sure that we're giving good answers, being reliable and honest so that we can sustain those relationships is a big part of our business. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would completely, I would echo both of those points. Um, and maybe just see, uh, I mean, reliable, um, you know, you can't just be wishy-washy with customers, but then again, that kind of also builds on, uh, what Jason said, as far as being personable and, um, like being honest. I mean, I just kind of what Laura said, being a good person and treating people the way you want to be treated. Um, obviously, you know, if you want, like in my case, if you want diets put together, um, and you, I tell you, I'm going to do it by the end of the week. Well, if I don't have it done by the end of the week then you know that doesn't look that doesn't reflect very well upon me and uh and that relationship i have with that customer um so but I, I would agree with both of the what the previous presenters said as well 
Can you all expand a little bit upon what either education or certifications um, or experiences you needed to get into ag sales? Sure. So I went to school here in Macomb and Jason did as well. He was a grade ahead of me. And both of us were in a unique position where our schools did not have FFA. So until we got to college, we really didn't have an opportunity to take ag classes. Um, so in college, I focused very heavily on the ag side and had thankfully had a lot of credits transfer in when I transferred out to Iowa State. So I got my undergrad at Iowa State. While I was there, I had three different internships and I cannot overstate the value of internships enough. Um, we are so fortunate to be in an industry where most of the internships are paid, but there are a lot of really good, valuable internships available. Um, in ag, you have the chance to get internships your freshman and your sophomore year. I didn't take advantage of that my freshman year and I wish I would have. So make sure that you reach out to the contacts you have in the industry as you're going into college, work with your advisor and your professors to find out what internship availabilities may be because each internship led to a different experience the following year. Um, one internship I had was in research. The next was on the sales side. They encouraged me to pursue the marketing side. I spent a year doing a marketing internship out in Iowa. Never thought it would be something that I would love, but I would actually sit here and tell you today it was one of my favorite jobs overall. So diversity throughout the career is a great thing, but don't be afraid of opportunities because internships, work experiences, and networking are so huge in this industry. Everybody knows everybody, so make sure that you don't burn a bridge or close those doors because they could be very, very relevant in the future. Well, I'm glad, glad Laura brought that up because I was just sitting here thinking who would have thought, you know, that uh, 10 or however many years ago when we went to school together that I'd be doing business with her. And in fact, I, I was sitting there thinking, hey, I got to call her about this this order that I need to make. So it really, that, that is a, that is probably the most important thing is the relationships are so important, you know, and training and everything else aside, you know, the relationships you create from day one, you know, are ones that you will have for the rest of your career. Uh, it is just so important, but I, I'd say for me, you know, I, I got my uh, bachelor's degree in, in both agriculture and business. I knew that someday I would love to have the opportunity to run my own business. Uh, so I focused kind of both on ag and the business side. Um, and, and I'm glad I did because it's those that extra business skills that really make things a little easier when it comes to uh, making certain decisions in the business. Uh, but I would say, you know, as far as the internships go, going into college, internships was really the probably the most important thing I did because that's hands on work. And, and as Laura said, you know, they are paid and, and we are very fortunate to have that opportunity from day one when you start going to college. Uh, I was glad that I did that. I was able to, you know, get my feet wet into my career early and I felt more prepared uh, when I got into or graduated and got into the workforce. Uh, but I would say, you know, uh, you know, sales and agriculture, you know, it's not easy. It's really not something that you're just going to come right out of college and know everything there is to know. Uh, but every year comes valuable experience. Uh, the more that, you know, you do do the work that you want to do, you're going to be more comfortable and inevitably uh, will make you more successful in your career. You know, I'd say, I mean, it's been over 10 years now working various jobs in the seed industry. Uh, you know, I really felt uh, two years ago is the right time to take all that experience, turn it into, uh, you know, a business that I can run on my own um, and, and be proud of. And I feel like, you know, I've been able to, to take everything I've learned and really provide it the best experience for the farmer. Uh, I could not have done that 10, 12 years ago. So it's really the experience that I got working all those jobs to now that allowed me to do what, uh, what I get to do today. Uh, yeah, so those are both great responses. Um, uh, I, did, I did have ag classes whenever I was in high school. Um, and then in the college, uh, I went to SIUE. They're not a very ag focused school. Um, so I did not have like ag internships or anything. So actually I worked, um, on farms, uh, that were larger than me, uh, during the summers and that kind of thing, uh, as well as whenever I had free time because college, you have a lot more free time. Uh, but then, um, 
I went up to University of Illinois and got a master's in beef cattle nutrition. Um, for those of you that I told that to last week as well. Um, but uh, that kind of led me uh, working with beef cattle um, during the summer internships, uh, as well as my home farm here, uh, where we've got 40 head. Um, really got me interested in cattle in general. Um, and so I went up and got a master's in beef cattle nutrition. And um, that kind of led me to where I am today. Uh, there's a lot of hands-on experience that you can learn uh, during doing a master's. Um, but I would not say that, that prepared me for a sales position by any means. Um, <laughs> I was kind of thrown into the fire <laughs> with very little legitimate sales training, but I just kind of, you know, treated people the way I wanted to be treated. Um, and so far I think it's, it's been working. Um, but, uh, I do not have the years of experience that Jason and Laura have. I am only on, uh, I'll actually be two years into my, my career um, in April. So coming right up, but uh, yeah, I mean, be diversified in your education um, and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. So, and then Shelby, I know there was one thing that none of us covered there that you asked to on continuing education. Yeah. Um, so when I got out of school, my job encouraged me to get a CCA, which is a Certified Crop Advisor Certificate. And I went ahead, I took the test, I passed it. I had it for a few years. When I had it, it required us to take 40 hours of continuing education credits every two years. Unfortunately, I've let it lapse since then. I think it was really valuable early in my career, especially to be able to build credibility with growers and the people I worked with to say, hey, I have this, I do know what I'm talking about. Since then, since my role has changed, I really struggle to get to 40 hours worth of meetings anymore, so I've let it lapse. I think it's a great program. In the future, I know I will have certi certain certifications about sustainability and everything for making recommendations. I know there will be more come out along the 4R side. One thing I do currently still have is a pesticide applicator test. We're not required to do any trainings or anything as long as we pass the test. For those who want to do the trainings, most guys have eight to 10 hours worth of requirements. So even in ag, once you get out of school, you're still gonna have to be prepared to learn. Um, there's still all sorts of meetings, stuff changes on a daily basis. So you have to be prepared to keep going and make sure you're staying current. That's a great addition. Thank you for adding that, Laura. Um, which definitely leads into our next question very well, which is what opportunities do you see for professional growth within your career path? Well, I'd say hopefully for myself, I, <laughs> I did, <laughs> hopefully I'm, I'm done, <laughs> done growing, but I'd say it really, you know, the, the greatest thing about production agriculture and, and the field as a whole is there's, there's no true bar for success. And, you know, as you've seen in the other, you know, my colleagues here, we all do different things and we're all successful in our own right. And that's what I love about this field. You don't have to be a CEO of a big Fortune 500 company to get success that you may be seeking in the industry. You know, it comes at all levels. And really, there is a lot of opportunity for someone to grow in their career in many ways, you know, beyond moving up that corporate ladder, which is also good, too, if that's something that you want to do. You know, really, for myself, I mean, that, that growth was the independence. You know, I wanted to wake up every day knowing that I can, you know, to the extent, control my business and, and my career. You know, I'm still at the mercy of my customers and the farmers that I do business with, but... Uh, you know, to me, that was the most important thing and really where I kind of want to continue to grow that business uh, and have success, you know, for many years in this business. Uh, but for others, you know, it may be working for their favorite seed company, getting to travel the countryside or, you know, uh, doing many different things. I mean, it all success comes at all different levels. And, and really, that's what makes production ag such an amazing field to get into because there's so much opportunity there that, uh, I mean, it's really just depends what you want to do. So for me personally, I always thought I would go on to get my master's. Um, I didn't intend to do it right after school. I thought I would either go back after a couple of years and get my MBA or my master's of agronomy. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'll rule that out, but I love what I'm doing currently and running my own business. And for that, I don't need to have it. 
If I do go back, it will probably be an online program. I know Iowa State offers a seed science program, which would match what I would want to do. But as I've gotten further into my career, I've found that it's more who you know and how to network as opposed to just having degrees up on the wall for what I want to do. Um, one thing I never thought that my job would entail is lobbying. I spend hours and hours and days and days and weeks throughout the year meeting with legislators on a local level and on a state level, trying to get some legislation written favorably for cover crops back a couple of years ago when we had the really wet year on preventative plant and stuff like that. So I found that the network, um, being on some of the state boards I am, like Illinois Forage and Grassland Council, I have found that those things actually have more value. And that's probably how I intend to kind of develop going forward is to have more of a focus there so that when we do need to get help with changing the laws to make it make sense in ag, I know more of who to go to so that I don't struggle as much as I did there a few years ago. Um, so uh, I'm a little, um, like I said earlier, I'm not as far along in my career as Jason and Laura, um, but uh, I see mine, uh, whenever I graduated, obviously I didn't have that sales experience. Um, so for me, my growth in I enjoy my job now. I don't know if I really see myself leaving, um, but uh, the next step, I kind of took this as a job, you know, to get some experience. Um, a lot of jobs require a couple of years of sales experience. Um, and so me not having that, I feel like that put me at a disadvantage coming out of, uh, out of college, but it's finding the right place to take you on and give you that training and, you know, kind of let you develop yourself. Um, and I feel like I've kind of found that. Um, and so uh, if I if if I do leave, um, it would probably be, you know, um, in a few years, whereas like, you know, uh, I take over in charge of maybe other salespeople um, that would be below me that then I would be kind of providing more technical support to um, as far as like putting together diets um, and in like the grand scheme of things, at least on the animal nutrition side, um, people with bachelors would be more of uh, the sales, um, and then me providing technical support to them with diets, um, you know, and that kind of thing. So, um, but that would, that would probably be where I would go. Uh, as far as education, further education, I, I do not see myself going back to get a PhD. Um, my master's was great and it was fun, but uh, uh, thesis or dissertation is uh, way too long for me, so. Thank you guys for, for sharing a little bit about that. Um, what recommendations would you make to high school students who are hoping to pursue a career um, in ag sales? So mine is, is gonna sound a little bit backwards here, but don't necessarily go into the sales side right off the bat. Um, a lot of times you get into the sales role and you're not ready for it. At 21, 22, I know where I was thrown into some of these jobs. I was way, way, way over my head. Um, I've looked at a lot of my peers and everything in the industry and the folks who are the best at their role today, they truly start from the bottom. That doesn't always mean necessarily starting as that minimum wage employee or anything like that. But if you wanna get into the sales side, some of the best sales folks, they came out of ag retail. They've worked as the applicators for a few years. They did a lot of the background work. They learned the process and that then they transitioned to the sales side. And that made things so much easier versus when you get thrown in over your head and you don't know the timing and how to do everything and all the background work. Um, so a lot of the folks who are most successful truly learn it and work it from the ground up versus just going into that sales role. Second big piece of advice I would have is don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to go outside of your comfort zone. If you're only taking those steps and those jobs that you feel like you can handle, you're never gonna know what your true potential is. So some of my most rewarding experiences have been when I was thrown in over my head and had to learn to sink or swim. Um, it's terrifying and very stressful at the time, but ultimately you learn a lot from it. And one final piece from when I worked in corporate, um, the times I've actually learned the most were some of the most miserable. When I had bosses who were less than ideal or anything like that, instead of just sitting there and being miserable every day, take 
take those days and learn that that's not who you want to be when you're the person in charge. Um, I had a boss who liked to micromanage and make sure that you did every last thing down to a T. I don't operate that way. So that's, that's one of those big things for me today as a boss is to make sure that I'm not stepping on my employees' toes. I, I have to trust them to do their job and then get out of their way and let them do it. So even when things aren't ideal, there's still lessons to be learned. So I'm gonna echo some statements there from Laura because she made some very great points and things that you know I've lived through in my career as well. And, and I, I suppose from what she said about going into sales right out of, of college, it, it was tough. And you know, I, I kind of echo some statements Adam said was that I had no training. They were they kind of threw me in uh, into the deep end of the pool per se and just said, here you go. You know, this is what we want you to do and you're going to do it. And and it really my first job was you know, I was corporate. I dealt with those same issues that Laura had had and I realized that this this was not not it. And I and I wasn't learning what I thought I needed to be learning. I had to re hit the reset button. I actually did go to retail uh, and worked, you know, kind of from the bottom up. I mean, I I uh, I took a huge pay cut to make, you know, to do that. But and I worked long hours. It was tough. It was, you know, some of the toughest years that I had to to, have to deal with. But I can say it's some of the best years of experience that I gained. And it's because of that that I was able to to really have a successful career propelled me, you know, with that experience. You know, Adam said that experience, it's just so key, you know, to do what you can, get that, you know, keep active in the ag field and, and really sets yourself up for success. But the, the last thing I'd say, you know, just keep an open mind. You know, I, I, I'd i say a lot can change. You get in your head that, oh, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my career. And then you start thinking that maybe not, you know, I. My previous job before I started this business, I thought I would do for the rest of my my career. And I realized that one day I woke up, hey, that's not what I want to do. That's not me. That's not how I want to be. And that's why I want to go do something different. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm just so happy that I, I kept an open mind. Otherwise, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So. Uh, yeah, so those guys pretty much hit the, uh, the nail on the head there. But um... Uh, and I, I know for those of you that listened in last week, uh, we talked a lot about on the production ag side of things um, about, you know, not being afraid to approach people and not being afraid to um, go out of your comfort zone, kind of like Laura said. Um, and I think that holds true to, I mean, not only in the ag industry, but every industry, um, you got to keep an open mind. You got to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Um, it's the only true way to succeed. You might have a job that you enjoy, but it is, exact, it, it is, is it exactly what you want to do um, for the rest of your life? Um, you'll never know unless you try something different. Um, and um, not being afraid to go do that internship, um, like we hit on earlier. And, um, you know, that might be completely different. Uh, I kind of uh, hindered myself whenever I went to and got a bachelor's in biology. Um, you know, a lot of their internships were studying fish um, or plants that weren't necessarily related to ag, but, um, and those didn't really interest me. And so kind of held me, held me back in that aspect. But uh, I do wish I would have kind of taken a bachelor's at an ag college, um, knowing that uh, I could have got some experience with crops as well. Um, living in Illinois, I get a lot of customers that, uh, you know, their main income is, uh, is crops and secondary income is, you know, livestock. Uh, so they're kind of a second thought. Um, but yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to try to try anything. Thank you all. Um, so now here is where I would love to turn it over to the questions that you all have. And again, I invite you to um, put them in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself and ask. You're able to do that. Um, another option, if you'd like, is to, under the reactions tab, raise your hand and um, we can get to you when you have a minute, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Um, I did have the first one come in. So as you as participants are starting to think about your questions, um, I will go ahead and ask the first one. Um, 
what recommendations for classes should someone take in high school? And I know you all kind of have a different area of ag that you focus on, but um, could you share some of your recommendations for classes to take in high school? So um, that, that one really depends on where you wanna go to college. I knew as a high school student that I wanted to go out to Iowa State. And I started talking to an advisor at Iowa State either late sophomore or early junior year and was really glad I did. They had a reciprocity program with the state of Illinois that if you had three years of foreign language, four years of science, three years of math, et cetera, you could qualify for in-state tuition. So that was number one for me was making sure I met those requirements so that I got that five or $6,000 a year savings. Um, in addition to that, I took a lot of science classes. Science was always something I really liked and it made the foundation a lot easier. So I took some AP science classes in high school, advanced bio, things like that. So A, it saved me a few classes in college, um, but that was also my passion. So even the science classes in high school that didn't count towards college credit, it gave me a good foothold for those college classes so that it allowed me to keep my GPA up. Um, I know you probably hear it all the time from your parents and teachers and everyone in your life, but GPA truly is important because it allows you to qualify for scholarships and everything like that. Um, I, I'm a terrible example of that. I hated doing homework. I love just taking the test, but I really wish I would have put more effort in in high school because it would have been so much easier to get the scholarships and I, I know if I would have had that extra few thousand dollars in my pocket in college, that would have made life a lot easier and definitely more fun. Well, had I had I had the opportunity, like Laura said, to take agricultural classes, I would say take, if that's something you want to do, uh, take agricultural classes. But as you, you can see, that's something we didn't, uh, we didn't get to do and uh, that was okay. But I, I, I want to add one, one thing to uh, what Laura said and I know it's probably changed. Uh, I'm gonna date myself a little here, a little bit here. It's changed, but really things that focus on computers, you know, uh, learning more about spreadsheets, uh, you know, the basics of, of uh, Microsoft Office, things like that, technology. I mean, it's such a huge piece of what, you know, Laura and I, and I guarantee Adam, we, we all do every day. So it's, it's really important to, to focus on those classes and then also to echo Laura's statement, you know, it really depends where you want to go to college, you know, look at what, uh, what they may be looking for, and that can help uh, you make those decisions on what classes you take in high school. Uh, yeah, so I got to take ag classes whenever I was in, uh, and whenever I was in high school, so I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to do that. Um, so obviously, if you're interested in ag, taking those classes. Um, and you know, especially if you're interested in specifically ag sales, uh, there is an ag sales CDE uh, that you could take advantage of if you have that opportunity. Um, but if not, and you really wanna go into ag sales, I would probably recommend taking a business course of some, you know, to get some exposure to see if that's even what you're really interested in. Um, you know, are you interested in the business side of things? Or if you're like Laura, are you more interested in the science? And then the business kind of comes later, um, or at least that's kind of, that's kind of how I approach things in general. Um, I enjoy the science. It's why I went and got a, got a master's in um, cattle nutrition because I like that. Um, I like getting the most bang for your buck. So there I do kind of like the economics of it. Um, but I would say I'm a salesman second, um, nutritional consultant first. And uh, being able to, I don't know, and I kind of went off on a rant there, but you know, um, you know, taking classes that, uh, could help you in sales, like a business class would probably be the most beneficial and, you know, but they honestly, Laura and Jason basically hit it. So I don't, I really don't know what else to add. Wonderful. Yeah. So it seems like just making sure you're taking advantage of the opportunities in front of you, doing your research to know kind of the path that you're on are all great pieces of advice. Um, what would you all say is your favorite part about working in your chosen career path? Well, 
I, that, that's not the easiest question to answer because there's actually several things, but to me being in sales, so I'm going to say, speak from the sales point of view. Um, I, I love sales. It was, it was tough to get into, but to me, uh, and this was something that was told to me when I asked that same question, you know, to somebody that was in this business at the start. And I said, what, what's your favorite thing about being in sales, being in the ag field? And that's, you know, I have a service to the customer and, you know, it's, and it, my, my service is seed, you know, and I'm trying to help make those decisions, help him make those decisions that will ultimately lead him to success in the fall. And I guess my favorite thing is when I reach the fall and I get that phone call or I'm there in person in the combine and I'm seeing the results of what me and the farmer have done together come to fruition that's that just is the best thing that I could say best feeling in the world when it comes to this career I, I, I there's no feeling like it uh, I would agree with that um, you know I enjoy helping people achieve those goals um, you know putting together diets that are helping uh, a lot of people especially since you know cattle isn't their uh, at least in Illinois isn't their main source of income that, uh, you know, helping them uh, get the most bang for their buck and uh, putting together those diets um, that are going to help them succeed and, uh, um, you know, watch those cattle grow. So um, that's, that's probably my favorite part. And I have another question coming in from the other side, so I got to go real quick. I would echo what those guys said exactly on seeing your customers be successful is definitely one of the best parts of the job. Um, one example for us is we sell food plot seeds. So a lot of guys who hunt in the area will put a plot of clover or turnips or something like that out to help attract the deer or the turkeys that they're after. And it's really rewarding to me when we have a guy who says, I've been trying this for four or five years off some stuff I've gotten from somebody else and we just haven't made it work. And to be able to sit down and visit with them and learn about what their area takes, talk to them about not just the seed, but the fertility, the lime, the fertilizer, stuff like that, that they need to have out there and how to maintain it. And then when they come back in the following year and say that it was the best experience they'd ever had, that they were really successful. And just knowing that we did what was right for them and hopefully earned a customer for a long time. It's really great to see those success stories. Sorry, I have to remember to unmute myself. Um, another question that we had come in, um, and I would be interested to hear everyone's take on this, but particularly you as Laura's, um, is what advice would you give to women who are interested in getting involved in the agriculture industry? Um, but I think you gentlemen probably work with some very talented women also and have some advice to share as well. I'm gonna let you guys go first while I gather up my thoughts there. Well, I would say, I guess, uh, advice that I could offer there would be that, uh, you know, I, I do know some, some wonderful women in ag, Laura being one of them, you know, uh, uh, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, don't feel like there's an opportunity you don't qualify for. You know, you, you can qualify for anything and everything in the ag field. Um, I know that uh, the ag field Field has been, uh, you know, dominated by by males, and, and it's it's changed a lot. The the 10, 15 years that I've seen the business grow, it's it's really starting to change. I, I love to see it, and it really, uh, you know, I just I that's I guess that's the biggest thing. Don't be afraid that you you, you can qualify for everything in any job that's out there. Uh, yeah. So, um, and I kind of hit on this last week too. Um, I went to, uh, I went, got my master's, uh, a very good friend of mine, um, got her PhD in beef pattern nutrition. Um, one of the strongest willed, most determined, uh, females that I know, um, and very, you know, wanted to prove, prove that she could do it. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's very successful. 
I'm currently the country manager uh, for a cereal grain company. So um, uh, yeah, she's doing very well. So do not ever think that um, you can't do um, what the a very male dom dominated industry, um, you know, we is ag, but uh, don't be afraid. Um, you know, you just ha gotta have the determination um, because in all honesty, um, and she uh, talking to that, uh, that girl that has her PhD, um, you know, she meets, she meets guys that are like completely against talking to her and, uh, but she doesn't give up. Uh, she's got a, she's so dead set on proving her point and, you know, that proving that she can do it and she can, um, she's awesome. So, but, uh, yeah, I'll let Laura go from here. Um, yeah, so that that's such a loaded, a loaded question. And I, I would be lying if I sat here and said I did not have some negative experiences from being a girl in this field. So growing up, I was involved in ag retail um, my last couple of years in high school and then throughout college, I worked there part time. And I always felt like I had to prove myself to the guys. Number one, I was five to 10 years younger than most of them. And number two, I was the only girl in the business. And I really regret that today. Um, I wish I wouldn't have had the chip on my shoulder. I was capable of doing the same job that they were, especially when it came to the crop scouting and stuff like that. Um, I had the same skills. The one thing that I will willingly admit that I wouldn't have 10 years ago is I didn't always have the same physical abilities. I pushed myself so hard at 17 and 18 to be able to throw the same number of bags that the guys were doing to lift the same 150 pound pieces of equipment. And my body's paying for it today. So number one, know your physical limitations and don't be afraid to admit them. If you are in ag, these guys will realize if you know the ag science side of it, they will respect you there even if you don't have the same physical ability. So don't kill yourself, number one. I wish I would have known that 10 years ago. Number two, when those guys sit there and they doubt you, just work that much harder. Um, I have some clients and everything who it's taken me a long time to get them to trust me. And I beat my head against a wall for a while, just frustrated that they didn't seem to like me, that they didn't seem to trust my opinion. We do trade shows. And even today at trade shows like the Peoria Farm Show or Ag Mac here in Macomb, without fail, a couple of times a year, we will have someone come up to the booth, spend 30 minutes throwing as hard a question as they can think of at me, and then turn to one of the guys standing beside me, be it my father or a different one of our employees, and ask, is she right? Does she know anything? It stinks. It's not fun. It's the reality. Just let them go. Don't, don't stress over it. Don't worry about it because 95% of this industry is great. And as long as you work hard and do what you're capable of, you will earn the respect of those who truly matter. There, there will always be some guys and some women in the field who are difficult to work with, but don't, don't let them stop you because you can do it. Um, about a month ago, I was at a meeting and it was the first time in probably six years I was the only girl in the room. So when I grew up as a teenager and we'd go to ag retail meetings, you could have three or 400 guys and I would be the only girl in the room. And that's really uncommon anymore. So ag has made huge leaps and bounds. Um, the research side, the true sales side from the corporate world, the agronomy side, and definitely the vet med side are women dominated. I know I got an Iowa State Magazine the other day and it's over 60% women in the College of Ag. There are still some parts of the industry where women are few and far between. Typically the retail and out on the field side, the equipment side, you're still a minority. But even then there are starting to be other women there. So don't feel like gender is something that can block you from it because in this industry, every part of this industry anymore, women are completely involved. Great. Thank you so much, Laura, for that wonderful answer. Um, I have one more question that's that was kind of sent in the chat box that I will ask, and then I'll turn it over for you speakers to share any final remarks you have um, for any of our, our participants to ask any final questions, and then we'll um, conclude for the day. And that is just, you all talked a little bit about the value of internships um, and those experiences. How might you suggest someone at the high school level get involved, if not in formal internships, but to gain some of those similar experiences? 
So unfortunately, that's a tricky one. And I'm, I'm going to approach it from the business side first. As an employer, my insurance won't allow me to hire anyone under the age of 18. So that, that becomes a real roadblock. Certain companies I know are getting tied into 21 and above. So if you can, your best opportunities there for finding work experience are local farmers. I know a few of our local veg vegetable producers hire co or high school students during the summer. Working for one of the seed companies as a detasseler or summer crew, those are great options. Occasionally, you'll we'll find it the college or the high school students can participate in, but just make sure you reach out and you network to the people in your area and see what opportunities are out there. there there's usually several, but I do know it has gotten harder to find for that 18 and under group in the last few years. Um, I mean, I would say just go out and get involved. Um, I mean, uh, I know from the feed side of things, uh, if you wanted to go into the feed mill today and, you know, even if you were sweeping the floors, um, my boss would be more than happy to have you. Um, but that's, you know, just a way to get involved. Um, and that's, that's the biggest thing. I mean, I, I know last week we said you go to talk to farmers and Laura mentioned that as well. Um, but farmers are going to be your best option. Um, another way is, I mean, you'll find out if you can get along with farmers, I guess, if nothing else, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, going out and talking with them, <laughs> trying to see if you can get a job. So sell yourself, but, uh, cause a lot of that is access. Um, but, uh, but yeah, stepping out of your comfort zone, um, and, uh, going to find, trying to find an internship with, any local seed company or feed company um, would be your best bet. So the one thing I guess I'll add to what is said, because that's great, what everybody has said, is that uh, is something that you should say and, and to anybody. It's something that I said to somebody that when I was wanting to learn about the business or, or really gain uh, some experience before I got into college was, you know, reaching out to somebody that was in the field and saying, I want to learn. I, I'm willing to learn. I want to know more about this industry. And I would challenge most, you know, anybody to not, you know, take you seriously and, and have that conversation with you and, and, and potentially try to provide you with those opportunities. I, I know I had a hard time getting those opportunities, uh, even with farmers. Uh, but from the, you know, like I said, when I said to somebody, I want to learn, they were more than willing to have, you know, I had a guy sit down and had answer all, I'll answer any question you have about the industry, you know, and anytime you have questions and that really stuck with me, you know, a lot of things. And it was, it was a sales position too. So that really directed me towards sales. So I, if you say to somebody, I, I want to learn, they're going to try to their best to teach you. To tie back onto what Jason just said there, um, as a high school student, one thing I wish I would have done more of was trying to find some of the local folks to just go ride with for a day. Ask folks if you can job shadow them for a day. Yeah, you're not going to get paid for it. It's not something you can put on a resume. But I know some of my job shadow experiences were some of the most valuable days that I spent at that age. Um, in a few cases, it taught me what I didn't want to do. But a lot of times, just being able to spend six to eight hours with someone and pick their brain about their career path and everything I got some great advice. And again, back to that network that we've talked about all day, it really, really helped me to build that network. Um, one of the guys I job shadowed actually was on an interview panel for me the following year. So just things like that, you never know how those people are gonna fit into play. So don't hesitate to build that network and take that time, it's time well spent. Wonderful. Thank you um, to all of our panelists, Adam, Laura, and Jason. We appreciate your time today. Um, I would once again ask that if any of you participants in our audience have any questions, feel free to ask those at this time. Um, otherwise, Jason, Laura, Adam, do you have any final thoughts, any questions, anything you want to share that we didn't touch on with the questions today? I think the one thing I guess I want to say, and I want to go back to one of the most important things of today, you know, it's all about relationships. Agriculture is such a small field. It seems so large when you're first starting out, 
but the more and more years that you spend in it, you start to realize just how small it is and how many connections that you will make over those years, uh, you know, both in college, even now in high school, you know, it's, it, it all matters. And those are relationships that, you know, some that you may, may have for years, some that you may think, you know, I, I give, I'll leave you with an example here that, that really demonstrates the power of, of how small the agricultural community is. I met uh, with the seed company that I do business with. I met a new employee. He was coming down to, to introduce himself uh, to me and what, uh, what his role was going to be and how he was going to help my business. And upon conversation, found out that his, uh, his brother had been my agronomist uh, 10 years when I, ago when I was working with a different company. It just, it really demonstrates how small agriculture really is and how important relationships are from really, from, from right now for the rest of your life, just how important they can be. I 100% agree with that. Relationships are everything. Um, but I'm also going to throw in here one thing we haven't talked on, and that is make sure you have a work-life balance. That's one thing in ag that I think we're all a little bit bad about is we get so caught up in the rush of it. And sometimes you neglect personal relationships. So make sure whether it's taking Sunday afternoons for yourself or once you get home at seven o'clock at night, shutting the phone off for two hours, make sure you spend time with your family and don't neglect those things. I know in my early twenties, I was all about work and I should have made more time to have a life in that time frame too. So and my last big thing is don't be afraid to fail. Every single one of us on this panel has failed at something. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons from it. I've learned a lot of things to do different, but don't let failure stop you from trying. Uh, yeah, so both great answers. Um, and then I would just like to hit on, uh, kind of reiterate what we mentioned earlier about not being able to, or not being afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, uh, go doing what you, um, like for me, you know, I, I wasn't really interested in crops growing up, uh, but I do wish I had a little more experience with that. Um, but, uh, I, I mean, I do here at the farm at home, but, uh, you know, crops never really interested me. Um, I was always more interested in the beef cows, um, or any livestock for that matter. And that's what I turned a career out of, but, um, I still talk with people every day about, about those things, crops. Uh, crop prices, especially when they were low this past summer, um, and now it's it, everything's good. Now I get complaints about feed prices being higher. I mean, it's a double-edged sword, but uh, you know, um, uh, I mean, stepping out of your comfort zone would be another thing. Uh, Work-life balance. Um, I'm kind of at Laura's stage. I don't really have any family other than my immediate family. No, no wife or anything like that to worry about. Um, so I. <laughs> basically just work for me uh, all the time so but uh, uh, and then relationships obviously very very important um, I talk with feed customers on a weekly or bi-weekly basis um, probably more so than maybe some of the Laura and Jason do um, because I'm, animal, animals eat all the time um, and they're constantly making feed um, and constantly needing feed and so uh, very, very close relationship with quite a few, and some of them that I've met uh, have actually become very close friends. Um, you know that we go hang out with. But uh, those, those are all great remarks and all great things to keep in mind when going in, going to college and then furthering your career along. Wonderful. Thank you for those kind of closing remarks and those final thoughts, um, everyone. If there are no final questions from the participants, I will um, go ahead and leave us today. Once again, just a final thank you um, to Jason, Laura, and Adam for your, um, your thoughts today and, and sharing all your wisdom with us.